Read Aloud Program in Mandarin Chinese. 欢迎大家参加我们的五千中文。我是申展. Uh, here is Shenzhen again and my colleague Zhiren. I'm trying to find where Zhiren is. I don't know whether you can see him, but well, yeah, he's, the, he's the man behind the Confucius email. As usual, we have a guest speaker today. Uh, you just saw a beautiful tea house uh, that the uh, our guest speaker will be sitting in later, uh, whom I will introduce later. So I want to jump right into today's poem. Uh, Zhiren, could you please share the PowerPoint? So now everybody should be seeing the first page of our PowerPoint today. Uh, the poem we're going to read today is Yin Jiu by Tao Yuanming. <laughs> As usual, for the read aloud, I will demo, and uh, you will read aloud yourself too. Uh, please keep yourself muted so we all will have an uninterrupted experience, and I will remind you to unmute yourself when the breakout session starts. Uh, for the breakout session now, please, um, as many of you know, uh, just enter in the chat room, A for beginners, B for intermediate and above, uh, our very imperfect system <laughs> to break, uh, to differentiate the levels. Uh, please note, we do record today's session. Uh, you can find the recordings on our YouTube channel and my cat is coming over. Okay, sorry. Uh, so, uh, and you can also find all the previous sessions uh, uh, on our YouTube channel. So next slide, please. We can see uh, the author is Tao Qian, better known by his literal name, Tao Yuanming. We learned last session when we were reading Su Shi with the literal name Su Dongpo, Chinese poets have multiple literary names often given by themselves to express certain qualities or ideals the poet looks for, or some significance that they associate with. In this case, Yuan means deep water. You can see the three dots, uh, the, three, the, the water radical on the left side of the character, and Ming literally means bright. So you can see the, um, the sun on the left and the moon on the right. Together, this character literally means bright. So we may have a sense or, or understanding of the kind of quality that Tao Qian was looking for. Let's also get into Tao Yuanming's life and time a little bit more so that we have some context for the poem we will read. Next slide, please. This painting of Tao Yuanming is accompanied by a calligraphy from Liu Chunlin. You can see his name at the bottom of the painting. He's from um, late 19th, early 20th century. You can see the image of Tao Yuanming in this Painting, of course, is an imagination. Uh, and the calligraphy right next to it is Yin Jiu, the poem that we will read. You can see Tao Yuanmin is sitting around flowers to be more specific, chrysanthemus, looking to mountains in the background and birds flying around. And we will learn why the painting is like that. It's a testament to that Tao Yuanming, born in fourth century, was still celebrated at Liu Chunlin's time, 1500 years later, as well as today. Liu Chunlin also is not a random artist. He was the last Zhuang Yuan, the title given by Chinese emperors since eighth century for scholars who finished first place in the imperial exam, which 
was a system in place for over 1,000 years for the imperial court to select officials and wasn't abolished until 1904. So Liu Chunlin, on record, was the last Zhuangyuan that this system produced. He's known for his paintings and calligraphy. And by the way, uh, some of you was asking about the calligraphy behind me uh, last session. And I promised in the future, we may have a guest speaker uh, on calligraphy, since as we were talking about uh, Chinese poetry, um, calligraphy has been brought up many times. And also we know Su Shi, we read last month, who's from 11th and 12th century. Uh, we read his two song for the river tune, Shui Diao Ge Tou, in October. And it, there's a side note to that, uh, and also a nice connection to point out. Tao Yuanming was particularly fond of by Su Shi. Um, Su Shi admired Tao Yuanming for his unadorned and yet beautiful, spare and yet ample poems, um, better even than uh, great Tang Dynasty poets like Li Bai or Du Fu. Next slide, please. And we have to inevitably note Tao Yuanming's time around the fourth and the fifth century. You can see this uh, chronological table uh, from Han to Tang Dynasty. Because well, we can see that um, the top is the Han Dynasty from 200, around 200, 202 BC to 220 CE, CE about uh, 400 years on the top. And then the bottom shows Tang Dynasty started 600 and, uh, 618. These are the two most powerful dynasties in China's history. And in between, um, it's uh, notoriously chaotic. Students of Chinese history would try to stay away from this period, the period in the middle that uh, Tao Yuanming's time was, was in between uh, as much as possible. So you can see from this table, um, the territory we know as China was split in general two parts in the middle. Uh, the North was taken over by non-Chinese nomads. So if you see uh, the gray area on the right side of this timetable, it shows 16 kingdoms in the North that were established by non-Chinese uh, groups in the North and later known collectively as Northern dynasties. And on the left-hand side, starting from the Western Jin Dynasty, moving on to Eastern Jin Dynasty and a few other consecutive smaller dynasties until 589 AD, collectively known as Southern Dynasties. And that's how China or the territory of China was split during those almost 350 years. And Tao Yuanming, you can see his name there. His time is crossing mostly in East Jin Dynasty um, and a little bit of the Song Dynasty, uh, the Southern Dyn the Song Dynasty in Southern Dynasties, and not the, the, the powerful one after Tang Dynasty. And the map on the right hand side, you can see the southern dynasties is basically the majority of it is south of Yangtze River. So in a divided China, Tao Yuanming was the best known poet before the Tang Dynasty, who first celebrated an individual solitary life versus public life. So next slide, please. This is the entirety of the poem we're going to read today. 
uh, while Tao Yuanming himself was not overly religious, Buddhism was introduced to China since 1 AD and has been flourishing during the chaotic time as we introduced. Nevertheless, his poems seem to demonstrate his ability to accept and absorb Taoism, Confucianism, and Buddhism. Such spirit tends to resonate with poets generations after him until today, and perhaps especially in today's world. Every poet we read this fall, I said they love wine. Tao Yuanmin is not an exception, and he himself, in fact, put it on written records through this poem, and also in the autobiography poem he wrote, uh, he, he literally said he's in love with wine. So I figure to resonate a time that the world felt very much divided and a need to focus on individual solitude life from time to time. Without drinking wine literally during lunch hours, we can read this poem, Yin Jiu, together. So here I would invite you, uh, first I will demonstrate the reading um, and please pay attention also to the translation um, by Stephen Owen. And I would also ask Zhizhen, please uh, move your mouse to the end of the line as I'm reading, so to indicate which lines. I will start from the title, Yin Jiu. Jie Lu Zai Ren Jing, Er Wu Che Ma Xuan. Wen Jun He Neng Er, Xin Yuan. Dizian your turn. Next slide, please. So again, I will do each character, pause, and then the line again. And you can um, please read aloud after me. Jie, Lu, Zai, Ren, Jing Er Wu Che Ma Xuan. So the entire line Jie Lu Zai Ren Jing. Er Wu Che Ma Xuan. Next. Wen Jun He Neng Er Xin Yuan Di Zi Pian Wen Jun He Neng Er Xin Yuan Di Zi Pian Next Zai Ju Dong Li Xia 
Yo. Jan. Tian. Nan. Shan. Tai Ju. Dong Li Xia. Yu Ran. Tian Nan Shan. Next, please. Shan Chi Ri Xi Jia Fei Miao Xiang Huan Shan Chi Ri Xi Jia Fei Miao Xiang Yu Huan Si Zhong 有 真, 意, 欲, 变, 已, 忘, 言, 此中有真意。欲辨以忘言。It's a brief poem. So now let's read one more time. Uh, I will pause after uh, two lines. And then we will move on to the to our guest speaker. So from the top, the title, Yin Jiu. Jie Lu Zai Ren Jing, Er Wu Che Ma Xuan. Wen Jun He Neng Er, Xin Yuan Di Zi Pian. Tai Ju Dong Li Xia Yu Ran Jian Nan Shan Shan Chi Ri Xi Jia Fei Miao Xiang Yu Huan Tsi Zhong Yu Zhen Yi Yu Bian Yi Wang Yan I have to also point out Tao Yuanming abandoning an unsuccessful political career, retreated to his gardens and fields, and dedicated most of his poems reflecting, justifying, and proclaiming life, enjoying farming, gardening, and the nature, like what's reflected in this poem. In fact, since Tao Yuanming, a new school of poetry Tian Yuan Shi was initiated. Can we show next slide, please? Tian Yuan Shi. So if we trace back, Tao Yuanming is the first best known poet, poet who started the genre of Tian Yuan Shi in classical Chinese poetry. To stay away from the chaotic world, one might follow Tao Yuanming's steps to cultivate one's heart and mind to focus on a life that's more connected with mountains, flowers, birds, 
fields, gardens, poetry, perhaps. Today, I'm very happy to have Ms. Wanling Zhang, a fellow colleague of mine at China Institute, as our guest speaker. Wanling, could you please turn on your camera? And you may also need to unmute yourself. Yeah, Wanling, uh, some of you or many of you may have known uh, about Wanling or no one in person. She's in charge of our adult language and studio classes. Uh, many of you are, I know, taking classes uh, from us. Uh, but you may not know that Wan Lin is an expert of Chinese tea. So today I'm very happy and appreciate that Wan Lin joins our Lunch and Learn and share her passion and knowledge on the tea culture. So now it's all yours, Wan Lin. Thank you, Chen Jian. Um, can you hear me, hear me well? My voice, okay. Um, thank you, Chen Jian. Thank you for the good words. Well, extra tea, I wish I would be one and soon. But yeah, I, uh, I do love tea. Tea is part of my life. And uh, um, but I'm not a scholar on tea, definitely not an expert, but I'll be very, very, very happy to share my experience in joining tea. Um, also, I'd like to say hello to, uh, yeah, you know, I saw quite a number of familiar faces and I know you're taking our classes. And uh, um, thank you so much for joining us. Um, I just want to touch upon a little things because I guess I supposed to have only 15 minutes, right? Quickly, because there's so much to talk about tea, and uh, um, as I said, I'm not a scholar, an expert, so it's only some uh, personal experience, okay? So we can kind of have a quiet moment uh, in joining or learning some knowledge about tea. Um, perhaps let me just go straight, share my screen, okay, my PowerPoint. That's easy for me to go around my uh, page. Uh, So hold on, let me see the slideshow. Okay, good. Uh, minimize. Oh, sorry. Go back. Um, well, you know, it's very interesting. Uh, the poem you just learned with Shen Zhan, the title is drinking wine, uh, what would you expect me talking about drinking tea? It's a very interesting or a strange transition. Um, you know what, from that poem, uh, I, uh, it's a very, it's one of the most popular poems by, by Tao Yuanming. For all this while, I've been wondering why it has a title of drinking wine, because from all the content, you know, the content about staying away from chaotic public lives, retreating to um, private or secluded or solitary life in the nature. That is something or is a major element highly valued or promoted in the uh, Zen tradition, Zen, Z-E-N, in the Chinese Buddhism or the Tao practice. Um, so I was wondering maybe is there a better title to Uh, can some of, you, some of you read this? This is a cha, tea, and chan, zen, the number one, and wei, a note or a taste, literally meaning word for word translation, tea and zen share one note, meaning you are supposed um, to practice your Zen meditation in the way you drink tea, or you drink tea 
just in the way like you're making or doing a Zen meditation. So there's, they are about the same in essence. Um, so this is a, a very, very popular saying started in Tang Dynasty. And one good translation is oneness of Qi and Zen. So that is why I was wondering why in a Tao Yumi's poem was entitled as drinking wine instead of drinking tea. Okay, so getting into the tea. Uh, first for those, they learn Chinese, they can read some Chinese characters or they, if they have some knowledge of Chinese tea, the, the structure, the writing, the strokes of the word tells you a lot, right? You can tell on the top, this is uh, the grass, radical, cao, the grass, and the bottom is the wood, mu. What do you see in between the grass and the wood? Is a person, a person, a human being, or just people between grass and wood. So that is the Chinese character for tea, meaning the tea is a grass or earth consumed by a person and the person fully enjoy or immerse in the drink. Uh, very, this is a, um, the development of the word. The original way of writing Chinese, the character T is like this. It was pronounced as Tu. It means bitter herb. So you can tell in the very, very beginning, T as a plant, or as a grass means bitter herbs is used as a medicine. So that is a very star, the orange of Chinese tea. Um, there's a, I guess you, you know, I guess believed or you heard about this. So the China was the very first country that discovered tea in the world. China discovered tea about 5,000 years ago. That is before the dynastic period. Um, it was by legendary stories, it was discovered by a legendary figure. He is actually the ancestors of the Chinese, Chinese people. Uh, let me see, this is a guy, this is a person. Um, have you ever heard of him? Shen Nong. Okay, I, I love this, this portrait. It's a very popular. And uh, he's the one who discovered tea by legend or a mythology. Shen, if you can read Chinese characters, Shen meaning like, like a god or a divine, Nong, farming or agriculture. So Shen Nong, uh, this is he, this, his name. He was named, he was called by different names. Word for word translation of his name, divine farmer, or the god of farming or god of agriculture. He is also the first deity of the five brains, meaning he taught the Chinese people farming in ancient time. Uh, he's also father of traditional Chinese medicine, Yao Wang. And Interestingly, uh, I think it's worth noting, if you can read the Chinese character here, Yan, Huang, Zi, Sun, that is a term we as Chinese, as an ethnic group, we still refer ourselves as Yan, Huang, Zi, Sun, the descendants, the children or grandchildren of Yan and Huang. Yan is Yan Emperor, Huang is Huang Emperor. Yan Emperor is actually Shen Nong. This guy, he is um, the god of farming and he is the one of the ancestors of the Chinese people, mainly the Han people. How did he discover Chinese tea? Oh, this is also another very interesting painting. You can tell he's testing, he's tasting the herbs. He started his Chinese agriculture. Uh, also, you know, the, uh, he identified hundreds of Chinese herbs. Um, you know, the legend holds it. He has a transparent body, 
transparent belly. So everything he can see through his body, whatever he consumed, he tasted, he can see the effect of all these herbs. And he's testing hundreds of uh, Chinese herbs as a medicine, and some of them are poisonous. So he also discovered by accident, the tree, the tea leaves. He, then he used the tea as an antidote to counteract the poison of some of the herbs. That is how the Chinese tea was discovered in the legendary story. So Chinese tea started as a medicine, only later on uh, becomes a daily drink or a uh, um, beverage. So this is uh, the very, very start of Chinese tea in terms of the history. Um, Lu Yu. So because I'm, I'm talking about tea, I don't think I can leave out this figure. He is called the sage of tea or the sand of tea. He is the one who wrote the very, very first book, a very comp comprehensive book on tea, the very first one in the world. He is a, um, a guy in Tang Dynasty. Um, see, uh, he is the very first one he wrote his monumental book, the classic of tea in Chinese, Cha Ji, the book of on tea. It's the very, very first one, comprehensive monograph on making tea, drinking tea, and uh, um, the culture, the history of, make, of tea. Oh yeah, this is the book. Can you read? I guess, you know, because I do see a lot of, you know, uh, our students, cha, jing, tea. Jing actually is there a classic or a Bible, the Bible of tea. So this is the very first known book on, on, on tea. Uh, we are still using the book even now. I have a copy here at home. Um, basically, these are the two figures in when we talk about the history of tea. Um, well, going back, coming back to the, this slide. So uh, Chinese tea, you, you can tell, has gone through a long history in, you know, starting in the ancient times, started about 5,000 years ago. Uh, it's becoming, becoming one of the, um, playing a very, very necessary or important or vital role in Chinese life. Uh, there's a saying, it's also very interesting, there's a saying we still use now, we call it the seven necessities, open door, seven necessities. Meaning these are the essential or necessary things you go about when you start your day. Uh, maybe quickly we can go through this. Chai, Mi, Yu, Yan, Jiang, Tzu, Cha, so that's the firewood to warm the rice you need to eat, the oil for cooking, the salt, the soy sauce, vinegar, and tea. So these are the seven necessities. And basically it describes this is the life we live. So you can tell tea is one of them, even though it's at, on the bottom. It tells the um, importance of Chinese tea in the Chinese life. Okay, quickly, let's see what, how much time I have. Uh, quickly get into the tea. There's so many different uh, categories of tea, so many. Uh, I guess there's around over 300 different types of tea, but by categories, normally we uh, group them into um, six categories. So we have uh, green tea, as you all know, then we have yellow tea, we have white tea, um, oolong, and red tea, and black tea. You know, in, in China, the red tea and the black tea are totally different type of teas. But here, um, we just call everything like a black tea. But most of them are actually in red tea based on Chinese, you know, um, category, categories. Um, these categorization are based on how the Chinese leaves are processed, um, also based on their different degree of fermentation. That's one major process 
fermenting the tea. That makes the tea, the final drink, tastes very, very different, even though they come from similar tea trees. But the taste could be very, very different based on the, the way how the leaves are processed. Uh, well, I just want to quickly go over what, you know, the, the tea, the forms, how they appear, how they look like. Uh, of course, this is very common, the loose tea, san cha. So this is a green tea. Uh, this is a, well, my favorite, tea cake, cha bean. They come in a very wrong, like a bean. Bean is a, um, a food. So this is a, the cha bean. And uh, cha juan, uh, like a brick. So this is a, it's only the shape of the tea. It's a, it's a brick. Cha juan. Uh, tuo cha. It's a tuo is a, indicating the shape of the tea. It's a round, a dome shaped tea is compressed. Um, I'll show you something I have here. Actually, it has a hole underneath. It's not a solid. It's a hole inside. Okay, I'll show you later on after I, I may stop the sharing so I can show something. Um, so those are the teas uh, in other categories and also the uh, how they look like from the surface or from outside for how they appear. Uh, coming about talking about tea, we just cannot leave out the tea utensils or tea set. You can tell how beautiful they are. Uh, drinking tea, enjoying the tea wear is part of the process of drinking or enjoying tea. Uh, here you can tell these says these are the most famous, well-known, uh, starting from at the Qing Dynasty, even until today, the most popular teas. I would say the tea utensils may be called yixi, purple clay tea set, purple clay, yixian zisha, purple clay. And this set is, uh, you know, the greenish is uh, another different group of teaware. Mm, we call it Ru Yao. It's uh, a different way of processing or making, manufacturing this, this tea set. Uh, these Ru Yao, by the name, it's originally were found or made in Ru Zhou. That's the name of the place. Yi Xing. Purple clay, Yixing is the name of this place. Uh, okay, I want to leave some time so to, to actually demo, to show you how to, a simplified way of making tea. Uh, let's quickly, I want to go over to the utensils. Of course, I'm not going to ask you to read or recognize all of these. This is already a sh very short, simplified list. There's a long list of all the things. But from here, you can tell why drinking tea is kind of like a doing Zen meditation. It takes a lot of time and concentration, being mindful on top of this, a peace of mind. So you can enjoy a cup of good, nice tea. I only want to find, uh, point out this one, you know, uh, one, two, three, four, five, the five on the list, Gong Dao Bei. You know the translation well, fairness cup, meaning uh, you don't really pour tea from a teapot to your cup. You need a fairness cup to be fair when you serve tea to everybody. I'll show you. Uh, why we call the Gong Dao Bay, okay? Um, oh yeah, I have a picture. Uh, see, this is a Gong Dao Bay, the fairness cup. You use this to pour, to serve tea to the people you serve, and you put the tea here, then you go to each of the small tea cups. 
and you don't put tea directly from your teapot because it's not going to be fair. The reason is when you brew or steep um, a cup of tea, depending on different kind like green tea or uh, red tea or oolong, the time you use to steep the tea is different. You're not supposed to leave, have the tea steep like for several minutes. And, but if you use the teapot, when you, after you finish, you pull the tea from the first one, then up to the, suppose you have 10 people you need to serve, the tea changes flavor already. That is why it's called Gong Dao Fairness. You, you pull your tea into the fairness cup, then it's the same. You know, the flavor, the color stay the same. Then you pull the tea into the smoke, the, the cups. Uh, I going, oh, here. You see all these, the teapot, beautiful teapots is only a few I just read from, from the Google. Um, it's, uh, these are the, from the Yixing purple clay teapots. You know, the teapot by themselves is art already, right? Um, maybe let me stop sharing. I can quickly show you something, my, you know, uh, like a demo. Um, so I'm very bad, you know, with technology. Can you see, I guess I have to kind of, how much time do I have? Maybe five minutes? Yes, you have all the time you need. Okay. <laughs> Before one o'clock. Oh? Oh, no, no, no. Um, well, uh, yeah, I have to say I'm very, very bad with technology. I'm actually getting very ner nervous today when I have to deal with the, you know, uh, laptop. Um, so we're talking about chan cha yi wei, tea and zen are one, meaning it needs all your mindfulness for concentration and the quiet, quiet mind. Um, because it's really, you just cannot, you know, hurry. You just cannot enjoy a cup of tea in a rush. You have to sit down, prepare, be calm, then enjoy. I will quickly do very, very um, simple, uh, simple, simplize, you know, the way up. It could be very complicated. Um, how can I start? Oh, here. Another thing is, right, I did randomly, and this is my, actually my first time doing this. <laughs> uh, this is my home, and uh, I do enjoy tea in a way with a friend, that's easy for me. Um, so basically, oh, one quick thing. We're talking about, I'm gonna show you the, let me put aside my laptop, uh, the different type of teas, right? And so we have the, the loose tea, which you know already. Then we have the tea, uh, cha bing, tea cake, then uh, tea break. They actually they come in all different size or shapes. I can just quickly show you, okay? Mm. Let me see how. Can you still hear me without? Uh, yes. Can you still hear me without? Hold on. Without my my air uh, headset. Yes, yep. we can hear you. Just cannot get rid. Of, hold on. See, I told you very bad with technology. Um, so this is a tea break. It comes in, in all different, you know, size. And they're like they're, what I have this one. It could be this big. This is one break. Tap one. It comes in smaller size, or it could be, this is the most popular size, hot one. It can come in a square, or it can come in an even smaller size, and uh, it could be even smaller. Hope you have patience with me. We are not supposed to rush when we talk about tea, but doing tea. So this is also tea brick charge one. It could be this small. 
Um, so this is our tea break cha juan. And we also, I showed you a picture of cha being the round tea. They also come in different sizes. This is our, the most kind of regular size of our, a bean and a little bit smaller or even smaller or even smaller or it, these are the come so this is how thin they are and but they could also be very thick so this is a cha being the tea uh, cake So tuo cha, you know, the round dome shaped, because I mentioned they actually, there's a hole inside on the bottom. Uh, let me, forgive me, bear with me, put this aside. Okay, so this is the one, not mine. Ta, tuo cha. Let me. Maybe this might sound better. So this is a tuo cha, the size, and uh, it also can come in, oh, okay, this is easy, a smaller, a smaller size. Um, can you tell from bottom? There's a hole, there's a yeah. hole inside. It's hollow. So this is a dome, right, the hollow. And so this is a, um, this is called tuo cha. I, I also one of my favorites. The tuo cha can also come as small as this. This is also tuo cha. As small as they are like this, they still have a hole inside underneath. So this is a tuo cha. Um, well, you might wonder how we make tea because these are pressed tea. Uh, we use one of the, you know, um, the tea utensils on the list. And uh, this is a tea knife, cha dao, is how we break the tea. Um, so normally suppose you have a, a cake or dome, then you just use a cha dao to get some of the tea from the brick or uh, the cake. So this is a cha dao. So uh, when boundary of picked, be dried. Okay, so I'm going to show you a very simplified kind of process of making tea. Uh, it's kind of awkward here, <laughs> my computer. And let me here. Maybe you don't really have to see me. So these are supposed the teacups, right? Uh, you have this is what I let me call the sir tea boat. It's like a boat. Cha cheng, cha chuan. So you have a teapot. Uh, this is a, um, the purple clay teapot. It's also come in all different, it, it just come in different, different shapes and their um, color. They are just beautiful. Oh, before I do that, quickly show you some of my, the teapots, so you can have some idea about the Yixing purple clay teapot. Uh, depending on how many people you're not going to have tea with. So this is my largest, you can tell this is this big. I can use this for like for 10 to serve 10 people. This is the lar largest I have. And even with this, I can serve, make tea for six people. And uh, the same, same thing, five, four to six people, or as a small one, if you do want to enjoy tea all by you to yourself, that you can also use the small teapot, especially this is good for making oolong, the yan cha, the rock tea. Uh, so these are all the, what we call the yixing purple clay teapot. Sorry, the sound, and I'm supposed to make a lot, a lot of sound noise. Okay, here, 
So uh, you have, when you have, let's see, when you start making tea, and let's see, this is easy from the loose tea, you use what we call teaspoon cha chi. So you get the loose tea to the spoon and uh, put it here. This is called cha he, he like uh, the lotus, um, this is bamboo. For having tea, you have the tea here. If you have people right in front of you, you are serving, you pass around so people can see. So people can see the tea. Only after going around, then, oh here, yeah, this is another thing why I'm calling the tea and zen the same. Uh, the tea, the, the cover, the lid, you're now supposed just to put it here. It doesn't look nice and it's uh, maybe it's not very clean. So the, we also have called uh, the lid rester or the rest, you put it here. Then you use needle, we call it needle, to get the tea into the teapot. Normally they, they have a little scale. They get to be very precise how many ounces you put in the, in the teapot based on the size of the teapot. Then you use, okay, this is a traditional like a clay tea kettle. Um, of course now everything is electronic. Uh, you can, the tea kettle, this is a clay. You basically, you just boil water Then depending on the type of tea, like uh, uh, I seldom drink green tea. Drink green tea, maybe you only take 30 or 40 seconds, you need to pour it out. So I'm um, uh, a black tea person. So I normally for the first steep or first brew, uh, I will let the tea to sit for one minute. Then I I don't go around to put the tea here, okay? So that when the time's up, I have this is what, this is the Gong Dao Bei, the fairness cup. Uh, it comes in different way, different, different, different types. So, or like this. So basically the first brew, then when it's ready, uh, you pull in the, the fairness cup. And so, because the teapot can be very small, sometimes you do the second brew, then you mix the first brew and the second brew in the Gong Dao Bei Fairness Cup. Only by this time, you kind of go around the tea. I don't know whether you can see the small cup. Uh, So then everybody got theirs. You're also, we're not supposed to touch you know, the, the, key, the tea cups. And uh, before this, oh, I forgot to mention one thing. We need to pre-warm the, key, the tea cup with boiling water. Then uh, there's a called Shui Fang Basin. We boil, then let's get a small one. We use the palm tea tongue, put here, then we serve tea. So everybody's supposed to stick to their own cup for the entire like our time having tea. Um, oh, sorry, I'm taking too much time. Um, but still, it's a very rushed uh, demonstration of making tea. Uh, I guess I'll just stop here, Shinji, right? <laughs> taking too much time. Uh, but thank, oh, thank you so you. much. <laughs> Thank you so much. It's it's really interesting. Yeah, I do have a few questions actually. Oh, sure. People, you probably don't see it, but well, we yeah. we have we have our participants chatting on the side. Oh, and uh, there there is a question. There's <laughs> mm -hmm. a question about um, 
uh, the do we need to wash tea before we drink? Oh, see, I told you I'm, I'm so bad doing this. Um, especially black tea, black tea, because the black tea and um, the, the the older the better. That how many years and then you preserve. So normally we wash tea and the black tea I will drink is it got to be over ten years old. Then, then become very mild. But for all these years, it might get some dust or something. So for the first brew, that's why we have this water basin, Xu Fang. The first brew, you just toss it. Then the second brew, you toss it. Then you discard only starting from, not only from my, my standard, from the third brew, then we serve to, to ourselves or to the people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And another question uh, from Fu Mingjie. Uh, I've encountered many different tea classification systems among different tea bosses in mainland China and Taiwan. Can it be said that each tea master has a different way of classifying tea? Uh, not really. And the, the categorization of teas are kind of fixed. Like uh, uh, because the process, the, the, uh, the way the, the tea leaves are processed are very, very different, even though they are from the same type of tea tree, like green tea. Green tea is zero fermentation, but need to be pan fried, need to be rolled, nian cuo. But like uh, um, black tea, that is poco post fermentation, meaning you ferment it fully, then you piling, then you ferment again. Uh, like white tea, white tea is zero fermentation. You cannot do the rolling or the, uh, uh, what it called, the, uh, the pan fry as the green tea does. So they are just very different. I don't think you can have your own category. <laughs> One perhaps last question. Mm -hmm. I know we, we are uh, approaching Going one o'clock. Uh, right, right. People mm -hmm. may need to leave. Um, so the question about poor tea, what is poor tea? And is it um, just coming from Sichuan or Yunnan? Poor, you know, one of my, it's my favorite actually. I do poor every, that's the most popular black tea, fully fermented post fermented, different from red tea. They are the best place. They are from Yunnan. Pu Er is the place, the name of the place. Originally, from, you know, the tea was discovered. So Pu Er is the name of the place. It's from Yunnan province. Mm -hmm. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, well, <laughs> thank you so much. Well, we don't have time for breakout session today for the poem, oh. but I think, well, it's time worth spent um, <laughs> on the, on the tea. Well, Lin, like you said, well, we, we shall not uh, <laughs> rush when we talk about tea. Uh, luckily, we do have the recording on YouTube channel. So everybody, if you want to spend more time uh, reading the poem, uh, it will be available in one day or two. Uh, I do want to make the announcement that uh, our next session will be on December 18th, still on Friday. Oh, here. Uh, yeah, and uh, a few upcoming um, programs here. Thank you, Zhiren. Uh, could you please keep keep moving? Yeah, that's the next few um, uh, programs at China Institute. And next slide, please. Uh, December 18th will be our next um, Friday uh, Lunch and Learn. And uh, we will send a follow-up email um, on December 22nd, we want to do a pre-holiday or holiday session that I would, we would invite you uh, to join us to read one of your favorite poems uh, or poem in Chinese. Uh, uh, I will, we will send out a follow-up email so that well, you can let us know whether you would like to join on December 22nd. I think at this point, uh, we will do it online. Uh, we did it in June. It was really fun. Some of you were there. Um, so I hope this time we will have many of you join us and uh, read on the screen uh, yourself. Uh, so can we uh, sh stop sharing? Yeah.
All right, that's it for today's session. If you have any questions, we, um, we are happy to stay around for a couple of more minutes. Uh, otherwise, I hope to see you on December 18th. Thank you. 好，再见，再见。再见，谢谢。